alongside head soccer coach Brian Haddock, John Edwards with you. And coach, a little different scenario today. We usually huddle up in the studio, but uh, with the nice sunny day, I was like, let's bring it out a little, get a little light into what's going on. Yeah, here. a little more vibrant. I like the, uh, the wall of windows and it's pretty bright in here, but I, I like it. I like the change. You, uh, since we last talked, you've had uh, a number of games over the past week or so. You uh, went on the road, beat Jabot, you come home, win against St. Dominic, you go out to St. Dominic's tournament, you win on Tuesday. Uh, talk about how things are going. We like what we see. Um, we're getting in the uh, you know Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday pattern, which is what we'll see here for the next few weeks. Um, you know, on the positive end, we've we've got to see everybody play quite a bit. Um, we've been getting our whole roster in at some way, shape, or form, not just into games, but in critical games, uh, games that are tied late, games in overtime. Uh, unfortunately, had a had a nasty injury on uh, on Saturday to Nick Epi, which in overtime had to allow somebody else to step up, and we, and we won that game. Um, so that's been the biggest positive, uh, you know, kind of getting to a, uh, you know, a physically grueling week like this week with three games and in essence five days to see the entire roster is priceless. You, uh, weather also kind of plays yes. into this because uh, it's been very humid over the past week or so. Uh, playing on field turf conditions always raises the temperature. So it's how important is it to keep the boys fresh? Uh, during the course of a match, yeah. Um, I, when you look at the landscape of high school soccer, if you if you're a scoreboard watcher, which we try not to be, but uh, you know, obviously you, you look to scores. There's a lot of uh, a lot of overtime games, a lot of one goal games against uh, all different types of opponents across the entire area in an area that's a hotbed for soccer. So we feel, you know, if you can be the stronger team in a hot match like we had on Tuesday, we had a mandatory water break. Uh, in the half, at the half between each half uh, on Tuesday, you know, I think you're going to have a good shot to win. And and I'd like to say, especially on the Saturday game against St. Dominic, we appeared to be uh, the more physically fit team in the very, very end as the game went. And then the same thing on Tuesday. Holt's a very good opponent. Holt was a team that went, uh, I believe, to the state sectionals or quarterfinals last year and bowed out to the eventual state champion, CBC. Uh, so we knew they'd be a good team, a uh, very fast team. And then back to today, again, another hot match against uh, a repeat opponent in St. Dominic's. And I think that's going to be more of a mental game. As we play a bunch of teams this year, you know, two, three times, uh, you know, I think the focus of us is to uh, maybe to adjust to what St. Dominic may do differently than we saw on Saturday. Um, in a hot game. So, you know, again, getting rest with our starting lineup, uh, getting guys into games, not knowing if it goes to overtime. So, Not only do you get St. Dominic today, Thursday, but you also get Oakville on Saturday, a team that you've had some pretty good matches with them over the last couple of years. Always. You know, they're, they're one of those opponents where, you know, no matter how they are or no matter how we are, it's that whole South County rivalry. It seems to always be a one-goal game. Um, Saw them in a district final not too, too long ago uh, that went to penalty kicks. So over the years, they're always a very good team. Uh, the little that we saw against, uh, the, we saw them play for a few minutes on Tuesday night after our game, and they moved the ball. Uh, they lost a lot of players, but they moved the ball a lot better than most Oakville teams. And I know they have a new coach, and you know maybe that's a new style he's trying to throw in there. Uh, but they're always a really good team. And we play them, actually, the first of three times. Now, next week, we go from St. Dominic to CBC, and you play CBC's tournament next week, which you'll get to see all the MCC teams, and the schedule doesn't get any more difficult, but where you've been playing afternoons, next week it'll shift towards the evening. Does things change a little bit for you now because the environment starts to change again and you have to change how things go? As far as the time of the games go, not really. Um, I think the opponents dictate that. Um, you know, next week, like you said, we're going to see three very familiar foes in, in DeSmet, SLU, and, and CBC. Not necessarily in that order, but um, you know, I think the, the good news, bad news thing is that those four teams in that tournament know each other pretty, pretty well. Um, and it's always interesting to go through that week um, kind of a ch like a chess match. A lot of these kids went to grade school with those boys. A lot of them played club soccer, and of course, over the years, a lot of their returning varsity players were on the pitch last year in some of our hotly contested MCC matches. So 
I don't think the timing of the game really changes our approach or, you know, or the fact that we want to see a lot of guys on our roster. I think it's the familiarity of the other team that kind of presents the game as more of a chess match. As you know, more of those players obviously have a great relationship with those coaches you know, versus maybe playing a team like Holt, who we haven't seen, quite frankly, uh, I, don't, I don't know if we've ever played Holt at Biani, So, And so we've, over the past couple of weeks, the team has really ramped up play. For your evaluation of the team, how do you segment your evaluations <clears throat> as a team, as a whole? Because the end goal is to be hitting on all cylinders at the end of the season. You don't want to start out a house of fire and then kind of fade off the middle of the season because it always seems harder to ramp things back up again. So how do you evaluate how the team is done? Is it a 10-game segment? Is it a 5-game segment? It's, is it a game-to-game -game segment even? Yeah, we addressed this actually uh, on Monday as a team the, the day before the, the Holt game. And <clears throat> really it's game-to-game. -game. Um, the reality is, is that you're building towards something at the end, but I really do believe to prepare for the end, you break your season up into chunks, and we try to do that week to week. Now, sometimes those weeks might be two or three games. We have a week where we play five games, so we, we try to segregate those games week to week, and then within the week, you know, really go game to game. And I'll even go one step further and really focus on winning each half. Um, you know, I, I think as teenagers, you know, when you, when you look too far down the road. And in our case, you know, the CBC tournament on the horizon. You know, soon after CBC, you got back to back to back the Smet, SLU, Chaminade, and MCC play. Then you got the CYC tournament, which is one of the most competitive around. You know, when you start getting into those sort of scenarios mentally, you know, you, you, you maybe lose a game that you should win, or you're in a dogfight against a team that you should be handling. Um, in St. Louis high school soccer, you just can't do that. So our approach is game to game, and we really take it a step further and talk about winning each half. You know, can we get a shutout each half? Can we score the first goal? One of the things that we try to do as a team each half is be more dangerous on dead balls. Uh, you know, you look at how many goals are scored, maybe not off a direct free kick, but as a result of maybe a second flick off a free kick. The numbers are pretty staggering, so we really try to focus on making those minor parts of the game something that, in a major way, you know, affects us in a positive way as a result. One of your mainstays over the last couple of years has been your defensive play, your back four, and goalkeeping has been really good. You've had changes in your back again this year with your goalkeeper then moving out. How do you yeah. feel that the, the defense has been doing considering they've limited teams on opportunity so far? Yeah, I've really been happy uh, in the 80-minute matches of, of our overall defensive approach. And the one loss we had uh, against a good Eureka team, I mean, the reality was that it was 0-0 for 85 minutes. So we couldn't collectively, you know, ask more out of our backs and out of our goalkeeper. Um, you know, the one thing that, that I think we still need to work on more are the final moments of the game. Uh, you know, closing that out, you know, not being too, uh, you know, comfortable, you know, being up 1-0 or up 2-0. You know, we let Jabot back into the game somewhat in the very, very end. It happened again. We were up 2-0 with about three minutes to go against a good Holt team. And, you know, just a little bit of a... Of a mental lapse, and, and I think that's huge to be able to solidify the final five minutes, ten, ten minutes of the game. But the reality again is that we're we're right there. I mean, we're pitching shutouts, uh, you know, trying to keep that goals against average down, and really trying to be a stingy Griffin defensive bunch. Um, so you guys have played a couple of overtime games early on. My opinion is I'm not a fan of high school overtime games, only because I feel that you're where some schools have numbers that aren't as big as what we are as far as player depth, whatever, uh, you're, you're almost risking injury as games move on, and I think that hurts things. I'm not a fan of it. I'm, I'm okay with it until you get the playoff time. But how much of a challenge has it been for your team so far to have to play those overtimes early on? And, and in doing so, what has it been like for some of your younger players that have had to play in those situations that they're not used to? It's funny. The first one, the, uh, the first game of the year, the uh, the uh, the Eureka game. Getting to your point about the newer player, so the whistle blows for the game to be over, and then half our starting lineup was shaking hands, thinking the game was thinking the game was over. So, you know, I I think some of our younger players were shocked that there was overtime, and it is what it is. Um, we. 
early on in the season, I think there's a big positive to it, and that's to see what your guys are made of. Um, allowing guys to rest, it does kind of change your tactic a bit because, you know, if it's a one-to-one -one game and there's 10 minutes to go, the choice is, you know, do you want to rest a guy that you need possibly for 20 more minutes and in PKs, or do you just want to go for the for the hammer and try to win the game there? So there is a kind of a tactic give and take. Um, where it's tough is, you know, the end of September, October, where, uh, you know, you're just praying to God that you don't play an extra 20 minutes in a week where you've got four games. And again, it's it's a way to get other guys into the game, but, you know, the biggest challenge is to risk the injury. You know, and unfortunately, it was at the end of the game on Saturday where, uh, where Nick Epi went down and, you know, broke his collarbone. So, um, you know, I'm a purist like you, John, and I'd rather just end games and ties unless you have to be advanced. Yeah, I mean, I, I just don't think that the, the risk-reward is that important during the regular season when ultimately the end goal for all the teams is to make it to the postseason, which they do, and advance their play from there. So if you need to advance, you play the overtimes at the end, and then you go to your penalty kicks, whatever. Regular season isn't as important because the way that the system is set up in Missouri that every team makes the postseason. Yep, and then, you know, on the flip side, uh, while I get that, it does, if you get into a few penalty kick contests, it prepares your guys for, for a potential district final that goes to penalty kicks. Uh, but, yeah, the health of the players, especially on weeks like this week where it's not just three games but 100 degrees is, is obviously a high risk. You had an opportunity to take in the USA uh, national game the other night. Uh, what were your thoughts, Josh Sargent on the field, Tim Ream, both St. Louis guys? Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it was a fun night. I uh, busted out of St. Dominic's to get to, uh, with my family, took my wife and two boys to watch the USA play Uruguay. And, uh, and the neatest takeaway was to see two local St. Louis kids, both from St. Dominic's, and Josh Sargent, who's a forward at 19. Uh, Timmy Ream is, I think, uh, maybe 30, 31 years old, playing center back against the number five team in the world. Um, and I'm a soccer purist. I really, really enjoyed the game. It was one-to-one. -one. Um, I get on the negative side of it, there was a lot of uh, maybe high-profile guys on both sides not there. Um, but yeah, anytime St. Louis can market their their product, their, their fans, um, and, and show the world what, that we're ready for an MLS team, all the better, and, and we always support it. 20,000 they said was at the game Tuesday night and it's it's different when you're looking at it at Bush Stadium because yeah. there's yeah. you know 47 48,000 people and there's only 20,000 in the stadium it looks really empty when you're looking at it through yeah. the television lens and for a soccer match that's exactly what you want you know when the new place opens up you know you kind of want that 20 to 25,000 because the place is going to look packed uh, you know versus playing at a Bush Stadium or an Arrowhead or a uh, you know Mile High Stadium where it's 20,000 amidst 60,000 sure. seats uh, but it was, it, was a, it was a great environment. It was really neat to see how a, a baseball facility can transform itself into a soccer field. Um, and then the, the hooligans and the fans uh, <laughs> in the stands are always a added bonus. Well, the hooligans had a, a good week because last week on Saturday they had the Stanley Cup oh, yeah. at yeah. Soccer Park FC game. Uh, at the FC game in which uh, Josh Sarge and Tim Ream were both there Saturday night. Uh, Alexi Lawless from Fox Sports was there, uh, and Alexi's take for soccer here locally is it's great. He can't wait for it to get here. Yeah. So I mean, what does that mean for the the students that you see, some of the players that you see in the area, uh, for them to think that whatever it is after high school, college, their dream can still continue. Yeah, and I think that's uh, we might have talked about this a few weeks ago. This MLS thing is going to uh, is going to take off because now the. Our kids, my kids, your kids can see kind of like a light at the end of the tunnel that I didn't have, you know, as a teenager growing up. You know, there is an end in sight after high school if you're fortunate enough to play college or, or at a low-level professional team. You know, there is a, a pipeline now to the professional ranks in this city. Um, and hopefully with the development academy that we have here, there is literally a pipeline for a kid that can stay in town, play academy soccer, play USL soccer and eventually play, you know, put on an MLS uniform in this town. Well overdue. I hey, always appreciate a few minutes, yeah. my friend. It's Thanks. Best of luck this weekend. And uh, we'll actually get to see the Griffins here at home at the end of the month. They take on DeSmet and Slew High at the end of the month. So that'll be our first opportunity to see the team on Griffins TV. But we wish them the best of luck over the next few weeks.